In our last lecture, we looked at the modeling of steel beams and columns, and we are along this course of design of steel structures in ETAPS according to the Indian code IS800. So we have completed the modeling of beams, that is both primary beams and secondary beams, columns, and deck slab. Today we will look at modeling of first staircase and then truss truss and staircase and in next lecture we will start with application of loads so let's first uh, model staircase what i would like to do is uh, let me go to plan view first at story one here i will select the option all stories and i will select these elements here So this is where our staircase will lie. Okay, let me select this also, not this beam here. And I have selected all these elements, then what I will do is I will right click on this space and then hide selected objects. Now if you see the 3D view of your model, you will only see that two grids between which our staircase will lie. Now, to draw our staircase, okay, let me open my whiteboard here. Let me look at the story height of our objects. For that, right click and left click and add modify grids and then modify our show story data. So, our story height is 3.2 meter. So if our story height is 3.2 meter, if this is our story height, then our landing slab, that is the mid landing slab will rest at a height of 1.6 meter. That means at the mid story level, but we do not have grid set the J equals to 1.6 meter. So what we will do is we will draw a reference plane here first. And to draw the reference plane, you can go to draw and then draw reference planes here. And then in this space of vertical offset J in millimeters type it 1600 and press at the base of your building. Then one reference plane will be drawn at a height of 1600 mm. That means 1.6 meter from the base. Now, if you click on this plan view here, you can see that one G1 reference plane one at 1.6 meter has been added. Okay, now we are in this reference plane here. If you click on this move down in list then you you will go to this plan view of j equals to 0 meter if you go up first you go to the reference plane j equals to 1.6 meter and again if you click this up arrow then you go to this j equals to 3.2 meter so now before modeling staircase what i would like to do is these inclined beams on which our steel steps are supported. I will model these inclined beams as ISMC 200 section. I will use a channel section of 200 mm depth for these inclined beams. And then for the this beam and this beam supporting the landing slab, I will use ISEMB 150 mm section. Okay, for this inclined beams also, I will use here ISMC 150 mm channel. And for these beams supporting the mid landing slab, I will use 150 mm I section. For that, I will have to define these two sections first if these are not already defined. So let's go to our define and then section properties and frame section. You can see that I have already defined ISEMB 150 here but I haven't defined IS, okay, ISMC 150 also has been defined here. So if it is not defined, then you can 
either click on add new property or import new property and then select the corresponding either steel flange section i flange section or this steel channel section and then select the appropriate size and after selecting that section property will be added to this list and you can use that section property while modeling so i have already defined these two sections so i do not need to define them again let's just click on cancel so let me first go to my j equals to zero section or j equals to zero plan view from where the base of our staircase will start that means these two points will start from the very base okay let's go to my architectural plan and i you can see here that these staircase steps starts from a distance of 1.935 from this horizontal grid so i will draw first some reference point to draw our staircase and then only I will actually model this staircase so 1.935 meter here so go to draw and then draw reference points option i will draw reference point in this direction so this is positive y direction positive y direction offset will be 1935 so if i click on this one a reference point has been drawn here and I will keep a small gap of about, uh, let's say, 80 mm, so that these inclined, inclined beams of our staircase, that means these beams or these inclined beams supporting our staircase steps do not coincide with the main beams of our building. We will look that in our extruded view what happens if we do not leave a small offset so for now i will leave a small offset of 80 mm and this offset for this point will be in positive x-axis so for y it will be zero and then 80 mm okay this offset has been drawn for this reference grid here and then let's look here to a two 0.35 meter is the distance between these two grids that is 2350 mm so what i would like to do is if you subtract from this 2350 mm that offset of 80 mm on two sides minus 2 into 80 you get the value to be let me calculate it 2190 and if you divide 2190 by 2 then it will be 1.095 meter that is 1090 mm and that will be the width of our staircase so let me draw an offset at a distance of 1.095 meter this will again be in the positive x direction so 1095 mm and click here now these two points this reference point and this reference point is where our staircase starts now let's go to our reference planet j equals to 1.6 meter similarly if you see here the width of our mid landing slab is 1.065 meter so we will draw our offset in this negative y direction from this point what is the width let's see again 1.065 meter so x will be 0 and y will be minus 1065 mm let's click on here now again draw an offset of 80 mm in positive x-axis here 80 mm and then 1095 mm is the width of our staircase 1095 mm for this and again for the second flight of stairs here now let's go to our first story level and draw a offset of first this is starting since we already have the reference point here i will again draw offset of 1.095 meter 1.095 meter okay let's close this now 
Before modeling the inclined beams, let us model the beam supporting our mid landing slab. So what we will do is, let me select. Okay, now let us select the option one story here. Let me select this beam is 3.2 meter height. Let's go to edit, replicate, and I will replicate it in. Okay, there is no option to replicate on a reference plane. So what I will do is, let me go to my reference plane at 1.6 meter. Let's draw a beam of ISMB 150. ISMB 150 from here to here and then click on this beam click on edit a replicate and we will replicate it at a distance of the width of our mid landing slab that is 1.065 meter so this is a negative y direction minus 1.065 okay and then also draw two beams to connect these mid landing slab same ismb 150 section or you can select here okay let me select here not this beam section but ismc 150 section from here to here and then here to here after modeling this inclined beam, let us now draw these inclined beams. After sorry, we have modeled this mid landing beams here. Now let's model the inclined beam. So let's go to the base, select this ISMC 150 section again, draw from here to here, and again from here to here. Similarly, from here to the first story level and again from here to our first story level now let's activate my 3d view here and you can see that these two beams have been drawn is part of our inclined beams for our staircase now let us also draw a slab here uh, let's draw an imaginary slab on which we will apply our dead load for staircase and live load for staircase for that what we will do is we will select this draw floor wall option and then property we will select this non here because this is just an imaginary slab and we are modeling this imaginary slab only to uh, apply our staircase dead and live load so draw your imaginary slab on this mid landing slab and also draw your imaginary slab for these two inclined beams here You may have to zoom on to your model to find the exact snapping point. Similarly, rotate this view from here to here and here and here and then click enter. So after completing the modeling of these elements here, I will replicate this to the upper story for that select all these slabs and also select your beams here these mid landing beams and then these inclined beams and then go to edit replicate will replicate to it replicate it to our second story and then click on ok so this staircase has now been replicated to second story. Now right click on your model and then show all objects. All of your objects are visible here. Okay, what you can do is you can also join these two beams using any steel section here, but I will leave this as it is for now. 
this completes the modeling of our staircase after modeling of staircase now we will go to molding of our truss before that save the model now for modeling of truss if you just right click on your space and add modify grids and then click on modify so grid data you can see that the height of our this fourth story is 1.4 meter here but according to our architectural plan the height of this truss is only 1.2 meter at the center so for 1.4 minus 1.2 that is 0.2 meter we will draw a small steel section supporting this truss so for that what i will do is let me just close this let us add now one uh, reference plane here at a height of this 3.2 plus 3.2 plus 3.2 you get that to be 9.6 and plus 0.2 is 9.8 meter so go to draw draw a reference plane at a height of 9800 mm and then click at the base now one reference plane should be created here if you go to plan view when the reference plane has not been created here let me just click here again okay now the reference plane has been created here you can see the reference plane here now what i will do is let me go to this reference plane so for that go to plan view it reference plane at 9.8 meter and then draw a column here let me just click this quick draw columns and select that section is ISNB 60 mm okay 65 medium ISNB 65 medium and then okay select these grids here go to my 3d view okay let's just do it in this way go to elevation view it one and then okay let's do it this way here go to this quick draw beam column option and then select the property as ISNB 65M and then make a rectangular selection here to make a small column supporting our truss in this way. Similarly, we are now at elevation view 1. Now you can go to elevation view 2 and do the same here. Now if you look at your 3D view, these small supporting columns have been drawn here. So now we will draw truss in one of our grids. First we will draw truss in this grid A here. So go to elevation and go to grid A view here. First our bottom rafter will lie on this reference plane here. So our bottom rafter section will be ISNV 65M for now and draw this 65M here in this way. Now from our plan we can see that our truss is extending to a distance of 0.75 meter since this point here, this point here, if you can see here this point and this point are the, since this is the center to center distance 5.27 meter, these are the points where our columns will lie and our truss is extending to a distance of 0.75 meter beyond these columns on both distance. So what we will do is we will extrude these points here to a frame section that will extend beyond this line. So for that what we have to do is first uh, activate the section that you want to draw beyond this line. For that go to this drop beam column brace option and you have to make sure that this property that property is selected here which you want to extrude beyond this point. So ISNB 65M is OK and then go to edit and extrude then extrude joints to frames so select the joint that you want to extrude so i selected this joint here i will extrude it in this negative x direction sorry negative y direction to a distance of 0.75 meter 
so 0.75 meter i will extrude it only once and then click on apply where is it okay this is not positive this is negative so select this joint again and then write dy is minus 0.75 meter and apply you can see here that now this joint has been extruded to this frame object similarly select this joint here and extrude it in positive y direction to a same distance of 0.75 meter and then click on ok now this bottom chord of our rafter has been drawn here now what we will do is we will create a central portion here that is central strut for that select this draw beam column brace option and select the property as isnb 40m for now and first go to you can see that we cannot find the midpoint here so go to draw option and then snap options here and you want to snap to your required points here use by checking these boxes so i will select this select all option for now and then click on apply and then close now if you over onto this frame section here once you reach to the midpoint of this frame section a triangular grid selection will be created for example look here this is the midpoint now click on this midpoint and we will draw a central strut of 1.2 meter right to the midpoint of this grid above here and after that we will draw the rafters here to draw the rafters we will select the property of isnb 65 again and now draw rafters from here to here and then again here to here after drawing rafters we want to draw the inclined struts and ties here for that you can see that in our plan here this we have except this because this rest exactly above our column so except this we have one two three three struts in one half of this truss that means we have to divide this bottom rafter into one two three four halves four halves here and four halves here means eight halves so select this bottom rafter here go to edit edit frames and divide frames and divide it into eight frame objects okay now if you over onto this bottom rafter you can snap onto this divided objects here like this so what i will do is i will select this option here drop beam column brace select the property as isnb 40m and now draw our okay you can draw up to required height here and we will delete them later just make sure that they are at a 90 degree that means they are exactly vertical There may be better modeling techniques and you will be used to these techniques as you practice in practice modeling in ETAPS. Now what I want to do is I want to delete these upper portions. For that, select this top rafters here and select these elements that you want to delete the top half after selecting all these required elements go to edit edit frames and divide frames and now select this option break it intersection with selected frames and joints and then click on apply now you can see that when you select this element only the top half element is selected that means these two elements are broken at the point where it intersects with another frame element that means this rafter here now select all these upper halves that you do not need and then click delete
so after completing this modeling of vertical struts now we will draw inclined struts with the same property ismb 40 m So we have completed in this way the modeling of our trucks for one of our grids that is AA grid. If you go to 3D view you can see that this modeling has been completed here. Now we want to replicate this truss to our other grids here. So for that go to this elevation view weight A again. Select these truss elements here. Remember, if you make this rectangular selection from left to right, only those elements which are fully inside this rectangle will be selected. For example, if you select in this way, this small columns will also be selected here. But if you select only to the middle of these small columns here, this bottom line, then this only truss portion will be selected. Go to 3D view, you can see that this truss has been selected here. Now we will replicate it to other grids. So for that, click Ctrl R. This replication will be done in positive x axis. So if you see in our architecture plan, the distance between grid A and B is 3.3 to 5 meter. So dy will be 0 and dx will be 3.3 to 5. And then click on apply. Now this truss has been replicated to this other grid here. Now again go to select and get previous selection. This truss will be selected. Next replication will be at a distance of 2.35 meter. 2.35. Click on apply. Select get previous selection. Another replication will be at a distance of 3.375. 3.375. Apply. Go to select and previous selection again 3.375 apply and finally go to select get previous selection final replication at a distance of 3.26 meter 3.26 meter and then click on ok now this truss has been drawn here now we want we want to draw the purlins to draw the purlins, one way is to go to draw, draw beam column brace object, draw beam column brace. For purlins, for now we will select as ISNB 50 mm. And then you can draw purlins in this way, just by finding the required grids and then connecting the grids. For example, from year to year, year to year, year to end of this truss to year. And finally, rotate this view and then click on the edge of this truss. In this way, you can draw your purlins. Okay, let me complete drawing purlins in this way. Then I will show you another method to draw these purlins. Now, rotate your view here. Be sure to zoom onto your model if it is difficult to model your elements. If that snap point does not become clear. Okay, another way to draw these purlins is in this way. For example, select all of these joints from where you want to draw purlin. For example, here and This, this joint, this joint, this joint, this joint, this joint, 
and here again and this joint and this joint now we will use that same extrude option you know that the distance between this grid e and d is if you look into your figure this is e and grid 3.375 mm and this is in negative x direction from year to year so go to edit first activate this option which you want to extrude that is isnb 50 mm then go to edit extrude and extrude joints to frames we will extrude it in negative x direction which is at a distance of minus 3.375 meter minus 3.375 and if you click and apply okay your selection is gone so go to select and get previous selection and then click and apply now you can see here this has been extruded to these points so if you go to select and get previous selection again these joints will be selected now you have to select a different joints for example here 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 and all of the joints now the distance is again 3.375 again in negative x direction apply and again select these joints here Now the distance is 2.35 that is minus 2.35 apply and finally we have one grid left to replicate select the joints Now the distance to replicate it 3.25 meter so minus 3.25 meter minus because to go from this grid at b to grid at a here we have to travel in the negative x direction so minus 3.25 meter apply and then click on ok save the model now finally after doing this your modeling of your steel building is complete here if you go to this set display option and go select this extrude frames and extrude cell option and click on ok at the bottom you will see that this is your extruded view of your building so this completes the modeling of our structure in our next class we will start with application of load shape your model so we'll meet again soon see you then